Muraho, I'm a Kuru Yahwe. So as my part of the Team Polyglot Challenge, I decided to start learning Kinyarwanda alongside you guys. Kinyarwanda is a language spoken in Central Africa, in Rwanda, Burundi, as well as in parts of the Congo, Uganda, and abroad. It has about 10 million native speakers, and it's tonal, like Mandarin Chinese or Vietnamese. Kinyarwanda is also a member of the Bantu language family. That's a group of languages that are spoken all across Southern Africa, and they include languages like Swahili, Zulu, and Osa, which was Nelson Mandela's first language. So if you know the grammar rules, and you have a basic vocabulary in one language, you might be surprised at how easy it is to pick up the basics of another language in this family. So here's a fun way to start out. In Kinyarwanda, the numbers 2 through 6 are Kawiri, Gatatu, uh, Kane, Gatanu, Gatandatu. So in Isi Osa in South Africa, you'll find that the numbers also have cognates. Mbini, Ntatu, Nne, Nklanu, Tandatu. And then in Swahili, they're very similar. So you have Mbili, Tatu, Ne, Tano, and then Sita, which is a different word because it's borrowed from Arabic. So here's where it gets really cool. So the same way that European languages like French or German may have masculine, feminine, and neuter, languages from Africa in the Bantu family do it a little bit differently. They do have gender of a sorts, except it's a much, much more expanded definition. So you have, for example, the human gender, or the human class, or the class for plants, or the class for artificial objects. Here's how it goes. In Swahili, for example, the root word for person is tu, tu, and the word for big is kubwa. So to show that there's one person, instead of tu, you say mtu. And if you want to say big person, it's not mtu kubwa, but mtu mkubwa. They agree with each other. And if you want to make a plural, you just take the m and you change it to wa. So, watu wakubwa. In Kenya, Rwanda, it's the same thing, except they say umu and ava. One woman is umugore, and multiple women are avagore. A boy is umuhungu, and multiple boys are avahungu. You take the root, so take soma, which in both Swahili and Kenya, Rwanda means to read. All you have to do is change the first two syllables to show the tense and the person. In Swahili, for example, is ni na soma. Ni shows that it's I, na indicates time, and soma is to read, so I am reading. Change that second syllable to change the tense. So ni li soma, I read. Ni me soma, I've read recently. Ni ta soma, I will read. Ni ki soma, if I read. The same way in Kinyarwanda. If you want to say you are reading, it's ura soma. U is you, ra is now, and soma is to read. The same way in Swahili you say una soma. Ura soma, una soma, very similar. Or if you want to say in the future, you will read Uza soma. Same way in Swahili, it's uta soma. In fact, one more way of looking at it is to look at the word I love you in Bantu languages. Ndagukunda in Kinyarwanda. N is I, da, present tense, gu, you, kunda, love. In Kiswahili, you have ni na kupenda. Same thing. Ni is I, na is present tense, ku is you, penda is love. And even all the way down in South Africa, in Isi Plaza, they say ndia kutanda. N is I, Dia is present tense, ku is you, tanda is love. So even if the words have changed a little bit, you can still see just how similar they are grammatically. As you start to study more of these languages, you'll find that there is an enormous overlap in their vocabulary. You have kugenda in Kinyarwanda and kwenda in Kiswahili, which means to go. You have verbs like gusoma, to read, or kusoma in Swahili, kuririmba in Kinyarwanda, and kuimba, which means to sing, kubona, and Kuona, which means to see. I hope that was informative. I wish you all luck on your polyglot challenges, and I look forward to seeing all your videos.